Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So in last class we were talking about um, western blotting and in last we were saying that okay immunolocalization. Why immunolocalization? What does it mean? Immunolocalization actually means here whatever protein we uh, tested like presence antigen and their molecular weight, the protein is isolated from the cell or the system. So, you purify the protein or extract the protein from cell and then you detect whether it is there, how much is there and you use antibody for that. Okay. Now, if I would like to see that any particular protein where it is located inside the cell, I am telling that okay, this protein is present in the cytoplasm and you are believing it, but if I would like to, but any, uh, see you remember I told you that one technique is there by which you can uh, see or visualize that how many MHC molecules are there in the surface. And if you give uh, bacteria to macrophage and incubate for certain time, then you will see the number of MHC molecule is increasing on the surface of that uh, particular macrophage cell. You cannot do it with ELISA or Western, right. You can estimate okay, yeah, total amount of protein is increasing. So, the in case of ELISA, the uh, intensity or the OD will increase, you can say, but whether it is in uh, cytoplasm or in the endosome or in the membrane, you cannot say. But if I tell you something by which you can directly tell, see this is cell, you see more number of MHC is there, it is much better and more convincing. And this technique is called immunolocalization, which is again a very important technique in cell biology okay. and this is immunolocalization. It is also called immunohistochemistry I H C, because when we localize cell in the tissue it is immunohistochemistry, histo means tissue right. So, either way principle is same what we do is what we do is suppose this is a cell okay. this is the nucleus and I would like to see any some protein that is I am interested say for example, before MHC let me start with something else. Suppose one protein is staying inside the cell, some protein are staying inside the cell and they are here. Okay. But in cytoplasm you cannot identify suppose this is in the cytoplasmic protein in cytoplasm you cannot say that this protein you are seeing like this everything is mixed up. Golgi, ER, so many organelles are there and cytoplasm material there are thousands of proteins are there, whether your protein is located where you cannot see. But here what we can do is how we do the immunolocalization, we are making the membrane porous. Okay. Just first what we do is, first we do normally we fix the cell. Okay. We fix the cell, tissue fixation or cell fixation means so that protein should not move after I start my work. So, normally we use formalin or paraformaldehyde, glutaraldehyde that can make a network between the protein and the cross link the protein. So, that protein cannot move it stay in its own position. So, nuclear protein will stay in the nucleus they do not go up uh, in and out cytoplasmic protein will be in the cytoplasm, membrane protein will be in the membrane. So, the first step is fixation, second step is permeabilization. What we do is and we make it permeable, okay? we do it permeable and this permeabilization what we do is we make small very small pore here. Okay. How? We treat the cell with very dilute and non ionic detergent. 
non ionic detergent normally we use triton x 100 saponin which is very mild detergent and non ionic sds is negative recharged it is also a detergent right but there are few detergent which is non ionic neither positive nor negative but they are detergent they can dissolve the lipid bilayer of the membrane and we use very diluted concentration and very short period of time it you have to do the experiment if you want to do it you have to standardize that but it is not long time so that whole membrane should not dissolve so very brief exposure will make whole now again we are coming to same antigen antibody thing now if i add antibody suppose this is in a tube assume that only one cell is there but there are thousands of cells and in here this this is in a solution okay and in this solution if you add antibody okay that antibody specific to a particular protein that you are interested what will happen that antibody will go inside okay and that antibody will go inside but if you don't make pore antibody is very big molecule they cannot cross the membrane barrier so they cannot enter so if you make holes then it they will go and after going there if you incubate for hours or 2 hours or 3 hours what will happen they will they will they will bind to after they will enter and after that they will bind to wherever the protein is there wherever the protein is there it will bind but antibody is colorless you cannot see so you have to find some device so that you can see okay two possibilities are there one you can use same enzyme linked antibody so you give some substrate so that color will develop wherever you will see the color like western blot wherever you see the color you can say protein is there but here you cannot see the color of a cell like this in naked eye what you have to do if you want to see the cell you have to take make you have to take a slide you have to uh, put some of the cell sample here put a cover slip on top of it and see under a microscope in microscope what you will see is you will see the cell and some part of the cell is colored and that color depends on what kind of substrate you have added okay where is the, where the color will generate wherever antibody is there color will be there so that way you can see that okay protein is in the cytoplasm or in the nucleus okay but more sensitive and more um, uh, more sensitive and more accurate and better picture if you want to get what you have to do is you need you uh, what you need is the antibody the antibody which is labeled with fluorescence the fluoroprobe okay you need a substance which will fluoresce and you know what is fluorescence right you have to give some energy in the form of light so one light will fall on it suppose this is the fluorescence fluoroprobe you one light will fall on it and that what will do the outermost electron will excite to upper level okay and then if while uh, that cannot i mean from its own state to upper state but the, it cannot stay there forever so the, it will come down to its original state while coming down it will emit some energy that energy you can see in the form of light that is fluorescence okay so what will happen if you see so normally in every fluorescence what is there every fluorescence what is there sorry every fluorescence what is there that there will be a excitation maxima there will be an excitation maxima that means you need a particular wavelength of light which will excite the fluoroprobe and then one it is excited it will come down 
and emit some light this is called emission maxima. So, that means, ev or every substance or all the material that we have in our surroundings is are not pluripole, there are certain pluripole. So, depending on the emitted light the pluripole may be green, may be red, may be yellow, may be, um, may be uh, orange. Okay. So, different color you can get, you can have blue. So, what kind of light excitation maximum will also change okay, depending on what reagent you are using and the emission maximum will also change depending on what wavelength the light is emitted we will see different color and that is in the visible range most of the time that is in the visible range. So, now now if I just delete this fluorescence mechanism part and then now if this antibody suppose this is tagged with a fluorescence which is red what will happen it will go and bind instead of enzyme everywhere it will be red in color. So, all the antibody is actually red in color again you cannot see this in naked eye or in the tube. So, what we are doing you are taking a cell sample you are fixing it permeabilizing it then you are adding an antibody that you have because you already characterize your antibody is binding with antigen by ELISA and western blot. Now, you want to see where the located then you are giving the primary antibody. Okay. Then you are giving the primary antibody this primary antibody with fluorescence tag will go and bind same way that we see how we can see the cell we have to we need a microscope, but in this case what we need is we need a fluorescence microscope. What we can see we if you see and turn on the light fluorescence light. So, that means you have different color. So, in fluorescence microscope you can excite for red you can excite for green you can excite for blue it all depends how much money you are spending so, spend more money more color you will get less money less color generally green red and blue is normally there at least green and red is there. So, two color detection fluorescence microscope is the cheapest one okay. much ex more expensive than the regular microscope visible microscope only, but you can do. So, what is there? So, you take a picture of the cell you take the picture of the fluorescence you where you will see only green or red or both okay. and then both means two different I am coming and then you superimpose what actually you will see. So, this is what actually you will see is. So, this is the cell. So, this is suppose a cell you are seeing under the microscope in visible light this is nucleus. Okay. In fluorescence you would not see the cell because it is in the black background you will just see some color some red dots. Now, you take this picture because this is also in a frame right. So, in, in this is in a frame this is another frame. So, now if you superimpose that what I cannot do here. Okay, if you superimpose that ultimately what you will see in visible light all the dots are sorry all the dots are here. If the dots are inside the cell you can say the protein is inside the cell. If the dots are inside the nucleus you can say it is in the nucleus. If it is in the membrane I am taking the membrane as uh, say green color just to separate in the membrane then you will see the nice outline of green bright fluorescence light in the membrane. Okay. Because you do not know where the protein is. Now, imagine I am checking the presence of MHC what I was talking if you understand this part. What will happen initially suppose two macrophage 
at two different stages. Okay, this is a macrophage, and this is another macrophage. Okay, this is another macrophage. This is another macrophage. I hope you understand what I said in the um, uh, immunostaining. So this, this is a nucleus. So the macrophage in the very beginning, when it was just growing, no bacteria is nothing. You stain with a green fluorescence antibody against MHC. So MHC is your target. MHC two is your target. Anti MHC two antibody, which is you can buy human or mouse is very much available, which is green in color. You follow this technique. What you will see initially, initially you will see very few green. Okay, it is not absent. And in your MHC class, I am sure you did not forget it happened few weeks back that MHC normally they express in dendritic cells and but they degraded by ubiquitination by March 1 protein. I am reminding you again, okay, March 1, but when infection happened, then this March 1 disappeared. So, there is no more negative regulation of MHC and more MHC go, right. So, that if you want to see that real, I mean, whatever written in the book is right. So, you do the immunostaining and you will see, suppose here there are only 7 dots, but after incubating with bacteria. If you repeat the same thing, use anti MHC 2 antibody, you will see many, okay. almost every, uh, it is increasing within a day, it is nicely decorated the whole thing. So, if you see more position of more green or much brighter or the more intensity that means protein amount increase. If there is one protein, one antibody, one fluorescence, okay, one protein, one antibody which is attached with the fluorescence that means, one molecule or two molecular fluorescence. Right? If you have 10 proteins, 10 molecular fluorescence, so automatically 10 fluorescence molecule will give more light. So, if just by seeing you can tell which one is brighter, which one is less bright. Okay? Now, there are many softwares are available. So, you can take the photograph or not you do not have to even take the photograph in the soft file or the digital image you can estimate what is the intensity or the pixel. So, exactly you can compare between two fluorescence dot which one is brighter and how much brighter and you can tell that okay, that means the expression of that protein increase that much. You can measure the whole cell, you can measure a particular spot, it all depends on what kind of microscope you have, it all depends how good software you have. Okay. So, this is immuno fluorescence. Clear? So, after this I will explain another um, uh, technique which is very 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 important all are important. I am not saying the previously whatever I said is not important, but important in what sense is very popular and used in many many uh, regular pathological detection and routine experiment as well as uh, research. Because here what I can see is I can C 1 to 50 cells. Okay, if I would like to do something, analyze something, I can do say if I study this macrophage, how many macrophage you can take picture 10, 20, 100, if you have time maybe 500, but if I say I would like to know the uh, say 20,000 macrophage or 1 million macrophage, what is their result. So, sitting inside the in front of the microscope and taking picture estimating them, it is not ok. So, individual cell or exact detail or much more detail you can understand by this. Okay. But, um, if you want to do the population study you need different technique clear. Before going to that I will just like to tell another thing. Suppose, you uh, localize the um, uh, MHC 2 here with green. Okay. Now, I would like to see MHC 1 also. In that case, so MHC2 green color, okay. MHC2 green color. Now I would like to see MHC1 and I will make it with red. So MHC1 I will make red. If I do the same, use the same cell and use anti MHC1 antibody, labeled with 
red fluorescence what I will see in this case the number is not going to increase because bacterial uptake will not increase the MAC 1 right. So, what we will see MAC 1 if it is there it is not in many may be 4 5 just estimation it is just all that do not see that this is a real case this is just a cartoon to explaining. Here also you will see some MAC 1 here which is not going to change number of red dot here number of red dot here are more or less same okay, because you are not checking same cell right this is one cell this is another cell but average number 5 to 6 or 10 whereas green increase from 10 to 100 two thing you can tell that MAC 1 is not increasing but MAC 2 is increasing that is one information and I do not know whether you realized or not at the same time two different protein you are localized okay. to both the proteins are membrane protein, but some protein some nuclear protein also you can localize suppose the red you are you have something another antibody which is blue and you can you, you can localize some protein in the nucleus which is appear as blue okay, which is appear as blue. So, what we will exactly see you have to take four pictures in this case you have to take four picture one visible cell suppose this is the dendritic cell or macrophage then one image of green fluorescence another image of red fluorescence we should not change the field of the microscope the platform should fix just we are taking different filter different image visible red green blue four image then in software we will superimpose them we can superimpose either one we can, with visible we can superimpose green we can superimpose red we can superimpose yellow right but we can superimpose all of them and generate a composite picture where everything is seen so in one picture you can have two different protein three different protein all depends on how many antibody you have how many color you have how many times you can but this sounds very simple and straightforward but there is no science behind it because one antibody is going to bind antigen everybody knows and if you tag with with fluorescence it is going to give you color known but doing this at cellular level so that each point is distinct cell is intact you need some arts in it okay you have to develop that art to do this nicely everybody can do that but to get a good picture good image nice what you want that to get that picture because you cannot control the cell right they will behave their own way so you have to develop that art okay so i hope um, you understand this part now i am going to uh, after this i am going to discuss about flow cytometry okay you must have heard about that flow cytometry and very commonly known as facts very commonly known as facts fluorescence activated cell shorter fluorescence activated cell shorter but actually the technique is flow cytometry clear so actually the technique is flow cytometry okay so this is flow cytometry another term is also called fluorescence activated cell sorter first before I proceed to this technique you have to remember that this is the technique flow cytometry is a technique ok it is um, just a minute. So, it is a technique, okay. but facts is fluorescence activated cell sorter. This is the name of the machine. 
actual name of the machine or generic name of the machine is flow cytometer. Fax is given by a particular company long time back, but it is so popular now everybody is saying that okay, I have to do fax that is not right. So, what this is doing this is the machine or the instrument by which we are going to do the population study that was just we are discussing few minutes back that immunostaining or uh, immunolocalization or immunohistochemistry all are same. So, what we are going to do is we will take a population. Okay. So, we will take a population say uh, lots of uh, blue cells, mm -hmm. lots of blue cells and different kind of uh, red cells and some green cells some green cells say some yellow. So, I mean I, I do not know whether you are noticing this or not my drawing I am not a very good artist, but still you can see that not only the color is different their shape and size is also different. Okay. Some are bigger big and spherical some are small spherical some little elongated some is irregular shape why do we can get this kind of cell why do we see this kind of cell this kind of cell we see in blood we have a very small platelets we have rbc small and then we have lymphocytes we have um, macrophage dendritic cells which are this kind of thing another kind of cell is there so which i can uh, tell you um, like say not many colors say black. So, they are elongated big cell and not only that their nucleus is very complicated. Okay. Nucleus is very complicated. So, this is the cell and you see their globular nucleus where it will say polymorphonuclear cell that is also present in blood. Okay. Their inside is very much complicated. Lymphocytes inside is not very much complicated because they are have nucleus and mostly very straight forward like most of the cells, but polymorphonuclear cells they are they are very complicated inside. So, these type of cell mixture of cells. So, when I am saying last staining all over macrophage all look same identical, but when you have so many variety of cell if you just consider the blood cell is a very good example of that. RBC, platelets, macrophage, monocyte, lymphocyte, B cell, T cell, NK cells, then you have the basophil, um, polymorphonuclear cell, neutrophil, right. So, they are big, they are complicated from inside and they are um, this um, different uh, shape and size also. Not only they are circular, some are very regular shape. Okay. So, fax is the machine or the flow cytometry is a machine where by using them you can identify which one is what not exactly seeing it machine will do that you have to understand or uh, you have to know how to read the outcome of the machine okay. then you can tell which one is what. And now not only with the size and shape difference I also give different color here while drawing this because is it possible now by immunostaining that what we learned few minutes back like I can make some cell blue I can make some cell red I can make some cell yellow some cell orange some cell green. So, along with this variety of size and shape and complexity if I allow or if I use the immuno staining or immuno coloring uh, histochemistry method this population I can make variety of cells like if I use anti T cell receptor antibody it will stain only T cell. If I use anti B cell receptor antibody it will stain only B cell same way there are some marker for macrophage. So, I will use that some for dendritic cells use that. So, if I have a definite and genuine antibody 
for any particular type of cell I can use that to label that cell only technique I just discussed. So, use say anti macrophage antibody which is say this is macrophage. Okay. So, this is a macrophage and this is a nucleus this is a macrophage. So, macrophage I know there is a specific protein which present only in macrophage same way if it is T cell T cell receptor present only in T cell what else present in T cell only there are another receptor you know C D 3. So, C D 3 is T cell specific if I have anti C D 3 antibody suppose anti C D 3 antibody which is labeled with red color clear. So, if I mix in blood what will happen if I give this red antibody I am not showing the fluorescence if I just so, antibody is red. If I give the red antibody which is anti C D 3 and mix in blood what will happen this antibody will go and bind only the T cell suppose the blue or the T cell. So, it will go only and make the blue to red fluorescence and if I see under microscope I can tell you, but how many cells I will count this machine or the flow cytometry will tell you exactly what percentage of cell is this red and if can tell you say 20 percent of the cell is or 30 percent of the cell is red that means, 30 percent of the total cell is T cell. Okay. So, that you can figure it out and also you can figure it out they are according to separate them according to size and shape. Okay. You can estimate the number of cells you can estimate many other things you can do many things with the flow cytometry, but to, I mean we are going to restrict only in this. So, today this is just the introduction of flow cytometry in next lecture I am going to talk about mechanism and how it works okay. till then see you.